Hey there, everybody. Uh, my name is Faye. I'm the founder of Lean Canvas, and I'm here with Jay Lindhag. Uh, and he is our graphic designer and a, um, a very, very amazing mentor and teacher. And he's here to share his graphic design portfolio with us and talk a little bit about his journey. So over to you, Jay. Great. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Jay, as Faye mentioned. Um, I work here at Wing Canvas as one of the uh, design uh, managers as well. I've worked a lot on mainly the website um, and as well as some parts on Discord. If you've seen uh, me around, you may have seen me <laughs> floating around, putting some patch messages here and there. Um, but yeah, that's my overall kind of role here at Wing Canvas. I've been here for about roughly four years. And um, yeah, I'll be today I'll be talking more about my, my graphic design portfolio and um, exactly what I showed during my high school um, days from grade 12, um, entering to my three universities I applied to at the time. Exciting. <laughs> this summarizes <laughs> it all, this image, Jay. Tell us yes. about this. Yes, I chose this image. Um, even when we do other um, portfolio critique kind of things, I always show this, this picture specifically because I felt like this was an, an overall kind of feel for art school. <laughs> um, to me, this is art school. Um, the difference that I find from like creative art school to um, like average university school is that, you know, in, uni in, in other programs, you have tests and exams, right? And you study for those. Um, but for, for people in creative industry, universities or, or college, it's just work on work on work on work on work. It's project after project after project. And there's not really a break that you could catch until you actually hit your I guess scheduled breaks, which is like you know March breaks or um, your reading weeks or your uh, or your winter break. But I felt like this one summarizes it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jay has uh, some old, very very old artwork to share with you. <laughs> <laughs> some ancient relics here. Oh my goodness. Um, but yes, so I uh, these are two images here. Um, one from two thousand three and one from twenty ten. Um, this might show my age, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, in, in 2003, this was when I was like maybe like first grade or something. And uh, one of the reasons why I put this inside here as well is just to show that um, being creative or just drawing in general was always something I really enjoyed, something I've always grown with. And I'm really glad that my mom kept this piece <laughs> that I made, I guess, like so, such a long time ago. And it said, this is me. So I realized when I found this picture again, my mom showed me this was my very first self-portrait. Um, that was documented at least. And I, I love it. I love um, looking back to this and seeing how um, stylistic it was at the time, how that's still carried on to my current personality and everything. And then um, my next one I have beside it is actually 2010. And that was when I was in the eighth grade applying for art schools, going to grade nine. And um, a really big struggle for me uh, was confidence at the time. Uh, I was really not confident uh, applying for art high school at the time and I, I did not get in. I literally did not get in. I remember applying and finding out that there was such a thing really late and feeling crushed. Um, the thing about this is that uh, the moment I got rejected from this art high school, I remember ripping out all my sketch pages and everything, it was, it was terrible. And my mom was like looking at me and she was thinking like, oh, maybe this is not like, this is not it for you kind of thing. And I was thinking the same and I was really ready to quit like art in general. Um, and I guess onto the next slide, you can see a bit of a glow up when I did go to high school and I gave art a second chance actually, because art in high school, uh, you, you're still required to take an elective for an arts. It could be music, it could be drama, uh, and it could be visual arts, or it could be anything of the sort like that, um, at least here in Canada. And I decided I don't really want to play instruments <laughs> in high school. And I don't like being in front of the stage for acting. Um, at least memorizing lines was not something I felt like I wanted to do. And then the last option was just art, something I was comfortable in and um, something I, I just felt like I can kill time with and, um, you know, take my mind off of schoolwork. <laughs> so I decided to go with visual arts and I met this crazy, amazing, two really crazy, amazing art teachers in high school that just lit the fire and basically said, like they knew, it's almost like they knew that like all these, a lot of students that were coming to this high school um, were people who needed, who had confidence issues because of grade eight rejections. And then they knew that. So they, they really pumped the fire in us saying that, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you get rejected once, it doesn't matter. 
you can still keep going and you can keep trying and you'll only get better from there. And then from here, by 2015, by the end of high school, this was something I was able to um, draw. So this is my level of drawing for self-portraits by the time I ended high school. And it really went to show me that, um, you know, I had to really work for this to get here. I personally did not feel talented whatsoever. I was with really talented people in high school. And these people ended up being people who were the top of the class, people with the top average awards in in like high school. And I was just I was just there. I had to really work hard to see it. But being in such a high competitive level with those people helped me improve, I personally believe. And um, more so than it was a competition, it was more of a community. And it was a marathon with other fellow artists that really wanted to be there um, just to, for the sake of getting better, more so than being better than someone. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm so glad to to hear about, you know, that that feeling of just being absolutely crushed and not thinking that you have it in you. I think we all go through that at some point. I mean, there are lucky people out there who don't <laughs> ever face rejection, but I think it's a very, very, very rare thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's even more empowering to learn that you didn't just let that stop you and you know, you, you use that to really uh, build on, you know, you, you, you didn't let that end. You, you just kind of, you know, rediscovered your creativity and it, it really shows and that transformation is very inspiring. All right, so <laughs> I know this is what you've been all waiting for. Uh, I know we have a lot of questions about what exactly do you put in a graphic design portfolio? Um, but before we go into that, what exactly is graphic design, Jay? Uh, that's a tough question. That's something I had to ask myself too when I was in, in high school. <laughs> um, and I'll give you this honest answer. Um, when I was in high school, I didn't know what graphic design was. And applying to it, I actually didn't know either. Um, so I thought at, at the time in grade 12 that graphic design was actually just illustration, but you're just printing it. And you make a bunch of prints and you can sell it. That's exactly what I thought graphic design was because the word graphic, it's so confusing. Um, but as I delved into it, um, into university and actually took all the courses, it was so much more. It's, it's everything to do with this idea of communication, media communication, and using anything graphic related to communicate that. So that ranges from things like posters to newspapers to video even. Um, even bits and pieces of animations, those title sequences, graphic design related. All those things that you see um, that have to do with any sort of text and graphic is likely to be a graphic design. Nice. Thank you for <laughs> telling everybody because, you know, there's a lot of people who are applying for art school and they're not exactly sure what they're getting into, myself included. Mm -hmm. Like, I also applied for fine arts and I got in and I took my very first class and realized, no, this is not for me. <laughs> uh, so uh, also, Jay, you mentioned that, um, you, you know, in, in the beginning, uh, you applied for many programs. So can you tell us how many programs you applied for and how did you know which one was right for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're in high school, there's there's so many schools to offer you all these types of programs. And I knew I just wanted to be in something creative. Um, so the first three that I decided was um, originally was one design and that was going to be at York and Sheridan. So that was a joint program at the time, which is no longer really a thing. It's uh, no longer joined. They are two separate programs now. Um, they both have their own design programs. And the next one would just be um, York U uh, for fine arts, uh, just their fine art program. Oh yeah, a fine arts program that would lead me into teaching um, fine arts as a high school teacher because I was really heavily inspired by my two, my, my two art high school teachers uh, and how they were able to push me. And I, I still wanted to do the same to push others as well. And then my third option was um, graphic design again, um, but at OCAD. And uh, one thing that I was told, and I didn't know what graphic design was again. Um, one thing that people were suggesting when they were looking at my work was actually to try graphic design. Um, I didn't know why until I got in and I can explain that a little further later, but yes, those are my main three that I applied to. All right. Okay. So let's dig into these examples. <laughs> oh man, I haven't seen some of these in so long. Um, but okay, so you'll notice that in the first like uh, maybe first bit of um, my pieces that I show are all a lot of them are gonna be illustrative. A lot of them are just gonna be fine art traditional pieces. 
Um, and I can explain uh, reasons as to why, but I remember seeing inside the um, requirements, the list, right? Uh, definitely review the list of whatever things you need to apply, uh, whatever things you need to hand in or to show. And for me, um, there was a lot of flexibility. They allowed up to six to 10 pieces. Uh, a lot of them were allowed to be traditional or even like actual fine art pieces. And you can see that throughout these ones, I just have a wide range of medium and media, which is what I wanted to show with these uh, fine art pieces. So the first one that I showed earlier, um, the slide before, that one was just pen, ink, and uh, graphite. And that shows that I can technically draw. And then the next one after that was uh, this piece, which was all in, um, the, I forget the white one, but it was like chalky. <laughs> I forget what it Conte? was. Conte? But this one, yeah, I think it's just Conte on black paper. And that just shows a different range of um, another like medium that you can use. And then my next one, we're going to be pastel. And ink and graphite was my jam at the time. And <laughs> that, that second piece was another graphite and ink piece. But I realized when I was doing all of these, I had a lot of portraiture. And I was getting me really nervous because these are four portraits right off the bat. And I had to get something different. So this next piece was a bit more painting. Um, and I remember this piece being about um, social media. Uh, it was it was actually a communication thing where uh, the whole piece of this was to create a really surrealistic communication piece that you can explain and talk about. And I actually found that this was a really good piece in graphic design to explain because if you think about media covers, um, these are kind of cover stories that you can pair up together. And when I had to explain this piece, um, talking about social media. It was had to, had to talk about um, how that light on a, on a fish is a, like a predator online. And you can't see those predators or who they are because they're covered in the dark. So we're kind of blindly, loosely following this light in the deep sea or in the, this deep web, I guess, and not even knowing it. Um, you can't really see in the background, but there are news articles in the back there that help give that um, tie in relation from that time period. And of course, this was a long time ago. This was like a high school me. And I feel like if I ever redid this project, I could probably push it even further to explain more about the technological ties um, that this piece was supposed to be about. Um, but having that thought process and writing those notes down really helped when I had to explain it to an evaluator. Interesting. So did you have to write descriptions for these pieces when you submit I, them? I would highly suggest you write some description pieces. I think it is required. I think they ask for 200 word piece um, for exactly which pieces you want to categorize as one of your submitting pieces. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure that you write your thoughts on that. I would say thoughts and process about like what is going behind each piece. Uh, and not just say like I use paint and, and orange and I use colors and and whatever <laughs> like they don't they, they can see that don't don't show don't explain what's already seen um explain what's behind the piece that you were personally doing when creating it good tip <laughs> okay so moving on to actual graphic design <laughs> tell us about oh boy <laughs> yes this is a very key graphic design um these are actual graphic design so these are logos uh these are logo designs i designed a lot of shirts uh, i was given a lot of opportunities to design shirts when i was in high school um and yeah like these are some of the oldest logos i've ever done and um they're pretty straightforward um they're just like different types of logos that explain like tying in with text, right? And this is what I mean where like, if you're gonna have text, you have to make it, you're gonna have to accompany the illustration or the logo with whatever the text actually says. So you can't just make a logo and put a circle on it and say art. Like it doesn't, it doesn't exactly finish it. Um, you have to try and give a little bit more uh, detail or explanation or tying it in with the, the slightest thing. Um, again, these were my logos when I was in high school. So I would think that these are actually very, um, almost too detailed to be considered a logo. Um, but I guess a lot of these turned out to be t-shirt designs. So they work out much better for t-shirt designs than I would say for a logo. Um, so I guess for the purpose that they were asking me for, um, they were t-shirt designs, not so much logos. Cause at the time they would always come up to me and they'd say, can you make a logo? These are, I wouldn't, I would say it now that I'm already in design now that these are not exactly logos. These are just t-shirt designs. So keep these in mind. Um, you can explain that as well if you have your own. Uh, and you're trying to show these to evaluators, uh, the more you know about what exactly the purpose that these are being put on, the easier it'll be to explain. Um, and yeah, a lot of these, 
I remember were being shown. I remember the shoes one was a, a drama one um, that people were, were doing um, from my high school. And they went to go to a theater and they wore these shirts on, on television. And I remember being like, that's my design. I, designed that. <laughs> I did that one. And uh, yeah. And then same thing with the, the, the art department one. I think they're still using that one um, on their sweaters. So if you're from that area, you might see that. Um, Very cool. The, a lot of these are sports teams related too. So I did a lot of, a lot of extracurriculars and to my advantage, they all needed cool t-shirts. So they would ask me if they, they, they'd want that. And you know what? As much as they were like all quantity, when you put them all together like this, it does become a pretty good piece, I, I would say. So would you advise people to, uh, when they submit work, to submit a collection or individual pieces? I think it depends. Like how detailed is one piece? Um, if you're doing logos, you know, or like even like these ones, like t-shirt designs, I limited mine to nine so that I at least have a grid. Depending on how much you have, you can show that much. Um, but if you have less, then you want to explain more. Um, you want to give more detail as to why you're showing this. But if you have like this group or collage of them, you can just put them all together and explain. This is a series of logos I've created or a series of graphics that I've created for multiple different occasions and t-shirts and maybe what you use because technicalities can also be a good thing here for media. And uh, for a lot of these, I was learning Adobe Illustrator at the time. That was my key thing that I was using. Um, and I think that actually perked up their ears when I told them that because um, the usual process at the time, at least, is that most people would know Photoshop and not so much Adobe Illustrator. When I was actually in university, I used Adobe Illustrator at least 10,000 more times than I had to do with Photoshop. <laughs> so um, I think being able to explain what tools you're using and media, uh, or at least be able to explain what you already know is also good because that takes out a learning curve for them. Um, Interesting, yeah. great. I love this yes. piece. <laughs> this one is a very popular piece. Um, I didn't even realize, like, it's one of those pieces where you have to take a step back or take a take a while to look back at it again and go like, you know what? This was really good. <laughs> like, this was good for, for its time and age. Because um, I remember when I was making this the very first time, I was, like, so, like, mad at it. I just kept going, like, oh, it's not good. It's not good enough. Like, it's not, it's not there. There's something that, like, kept telling me I needed to push further. Um, and eventually... Thank goodness for deadlines. Um, you just have to let go eventually, right? And I think that's something to know in, in high school that, you know, you can't get a piece all the way up to 100%, but you can try your damn best to get it to as high as possible to it. And, you know, once it's submitted, let go. You, you can't think about it anymore. And then another thing is, like, when it comes back and it gets graded, I mean, who says that you can't go back and retouch it? Like, <laughs> that's another thing that actually a big tip I would say when you do get into university, you know? Uh, definitely look into that and, and start touching it up but this piece more specifically was a text portrait so another portrait <laughs> but this one specifically goes around text and i remember i didn't ex exactly remember what text i was using or what words i was actually using these were all just words that were coming to my mind uh and i remember when i showed this piece the guy actually stopped me the evaluator and he went back to that piece and he told me to explain it right there and then and he was like what is this piece about and i was like <laughs> like oh no and then you know this is kind of where art bs can come in play but i mean uh, generally understanding what your your work is about can also really help and luckily this was a piece that i generally knew what i was doing and i just explained that when i was doing my art bs at least was saying that um all this text were just thoughts that go into my mind things that were happening in my head at the time of making this and just things i was constantly thinking about while while writing and then you know, it all put this these words together and that visually defined me, but just through text. So yes. that was what I explained. <laughs> that's Very what I good. Told yeah, that I mean, that that's a good enough explanation for sure. Especially if you are a graphic designer, topography is so important in your book because that's probably what you spend the first few years learning, right? Is type. So uh, you know, it's I think I think having illustration skills and being able to draw is a really good strength to become a graphic designer. And you should definitely put that in your book, but don't underestimate the value of typography. And I think you show that really well here. 
Okay, so okay. some photography, is this it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so this goes into more of my media. So the courses I was taking, actually, I, I should probably explain as well when I was in high school, is I took a lot of visual arts. I took all the visual art courses that were available. And I also took media arts. So media arts opened up for us at the 10th grade. So when you're in the second year of your high school, um, you can start taking media arts. And I took media arts all the way up to the end as well. And I also ended up taking a yearbook course. So a lot of my courses that I was taking um, were very heavily art related because I, I started to realize I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to apply to university. And the earlier you can tell yourself what you want, um, the more chances you'll actually get to create more pieces, more options for portfolios. So um, if you're still young and in, in, in grade nine, I'd highly suggest, you know, considering um, planning out those courses because the more options you have, the more the more pieces you can submit um, or, or play around with. So these was this was when I started doing photography. And this was also part of media arts. Uh, this first picture was a still life. The next one was a Photoshop edit of um a guy doing a, a kick i forget what the this this whole thing was but it's all it was like a motion motion photo um taking stills of each part each time he he moves kind of thing um the first one was really good in my opinion because it shows composition it shows that you can actually create a scene and that you know what you're kind of thinking about in terms of balancing out your 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 pictures and this goes really well when it comes into graphics as well because Visually, you understand what balance is, and it shows that you actually understand that design element or design principle. Um, those, those, both of those. If you can explain those during a, a critique, it's even better. Um, same thing with the other one; it just shows some Photoshop edits. These ones as well, Photoshop recreations, um, and also this one. I remember the first one right here um, is called a tilt shift, and that shows to goes to show color editing and trying to make it feel more like you're seeing a, a different type of scene, like. They're supposed to look like toys, and I don't think this was my best Photoshop edit, <laughs> especially in high school. I remember struggling with this one, but then thinking, like, you know what? Let's just let's just throw it in. Like, I feel comfortable enough to be able to put this into my portfolio piece because it does um, show something for me. Um, and the second one was really fun. That was, uh, that's my uh, that was my uh, childhood recreation. I remember we had to take a photo, try and Photoshop edit, and try and get it your your photo to look more vintage back to the day of like of those and I definitely think I could still do better but at high school I think this is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're always our own worst critics for sure. <laughs> so, but that's a very very cute photo and it really definitely shows your personality which is yes. great. Oh I remember this one was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> This one, I got my sister to sit and um, we were in a dark room and then basically I was drawing with a flashlight um, and we were doing a long exposure photo so um, all the, we were exploring a lot of different camera techniques was what it was in media arts. Um, it was a very broad range, which is why I put these all together because this shows just different types of photo techniques and you understanding, but also learning quickly how to use those different techniques. Um, and that's what I really wanted to focus on when explaining these pieces, like the, the whole like speed of different explorations and technicality in photos. So this one was, uh, yeah, we drew with a flashlight. We had a long exposure on, and I remember having a little flashlight and just drawing a fish and everything. And this this was like one of the pieces that turned out really well. I remember collaging maybe a few other ones, but yeah, my sister had a blast. She was just sitting there with her phone. And then I was just literally running around, moving around her, doing all these fishes. And it's funny because fishes is still very relevant to uh, my current brand today. I, I do a lot of fish work with fishes involved, um, which I find funny that it's been something that's been there since high school. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the second photo right uh, on the other side is um, a planet one. Um, I can't remember exactly how we did it. It's been a while, but we took a normal landscape photo and there's a certain Photoshop edit that will basically turn it into a ball, but you want to make sure that you get the perfect composition to be able to do this and then start to Photoshop edit um, some pieces here and there so that it's very um, clear and like united as it goes around in a globe kind of kind of view. It's, it's interesting because I do see a lot of students with photography work, but sometimes it's hard to tell whether or not something is intentional. Like how do you, you know, when, when I look at these pieces, they're, they're, they've got a conceptual, you know, touch to them. Either you're, they're very experimental or they've been manipulated uh, because it's very hard to do now with all of the things you can do with Instagram filters, you know, it's almost like, it's kind of taken away a little bit of the um, 
of 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 the experimental uh, you know the, the 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 creativity because now it's just instant so do you have any tips for students uh today uh and their mm -hmm. photography hmm, i think for photography it comes down there's always conceptual there's always conceptual and if it's not conceptual it's got to show your technicality i think it's one or the other right um with this it was a lot of conceptuality being being involved a lot of experimental kind of things but then there's also um, just like straight up good technicality in a photo. And, and I know designers, um, they'll be able to see it because we, we practice rule of thirds like almost everywhere. Um, and, you know, even golden ratio if you want to go really deep, but I don't really go that deep. Uh, most times I usually just stick to my rules of thirds. And if you can see it, like you you can tell like what someone's doing in a photo, in, like in a photo and then, um, you know, being able to figure out your color choices and color balance in a photo and everything, being able to show those things, um, and understanding what those those terms are. Um, so if I if I sound like I'm not making too much sense, you know, maybe you look into some more photography terms so that you can at least use those to your advantage when explaining um, to a an evaluator what your thoughts were on like when trying to take this photo or why you're so drawn to why you think this photo is so good. I think most most photos that you take you can almost already tell if you like it or not. And being able to explain why you like it only helps versus why you don't like it. Or, you know, find out why you don't like it and it'll help you understand why you like one photo more than the other. Because um, I think in, in photography, and I mean, Faye, you might've seen me do this when we were back in the studio, but I would take like a hundred shots <laughs> like when we, were, when we were doing photos <laughs> for things. And, uh, and I would say like, you know, you, may, you might take three or four of the exact same photo, but there's slight movement differences that you, that will really push your photo to the next level and why you're being so picky about why you chose this photo versus, hey, we have four photos, let's just upload all four. Like it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, these are fresh. So tell us about these. Uh, yes. These, uh, this was my favorite, one of my favorite pieces back in high school. I remember it was for an exam. Uh, it was for a media exam. And these were um, a poster series uh, for a, um, a topic on the five stages of grief, I believe. Um, so the five stages of grief, first one being this uh, disbelief, second anger, depression. I think the next one is bargain and then acceptance. Um, but yeah, if we go back to the other ones, um, this was just straight up like my best pieces I did on Adobe Illustrator at the time, at least I think, um, when I was at that age. And, you know, I remember sketching these out. You guys will see some of my sketches for these later, but I remember sketching these out first and then like tracing them onto Illustrator and everything. And um, the whole concept behind it was a lot of fun. I think it showed a lot of my personality and style, especially my Adobe Illustrator style at the time. Um, and actually, I'd still say it's still similar to this, but it's only grown a lot further from what it was at, at the time. Um, and then, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And I think uh, being able to explain the whole poster series um, as a set that was related to the five stages of grief um, was also a really good thing to be able to tie um, the whole series together, right? Now it's not just like, oh, you're just making different posters and here you go. I think um what's really good actually even even in design i remember in university they really like the idea of a series because it shows that you're thinking beyond just one piece right let's say you're even talking marketing now or you're talking about actual graphics communication you know you can design one social media instagram post or something right but how can you make that into a long series so that you, you can keep posting something different every week right it shows the sustainability of something versus just a single piece where it's like okay you're done next piece but you have to pump in all the hours all over again, or you have to think of a whole new concept just to get attention again. So I think, again, this was a good piece to show as, as an explanation of to introducing series. Um, yeah, in that way for graphic design. Interesting. I think working in a series is really good for e e illustration, right? Yes. Uh, and animation because it, it is all consecutive. So generally a really good idea to have a series in your portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this was a, a little bit of an overview just to give you an idea of how big the pieces actually were. Um, because I know I know a lot of places are doing online portfolios, but um, at least during my time, um, we were doing in-person portfolios. And I don't know if in-person portfolios are a thing right now just due to COVID and everything. But if you were to do an in-person portfolio, this is just a general idea to see how big my pieces were. Because, you know, you can have a little piece like this, but you're not going to show them like... <laughs> You're not going to go up to a, your evaluator and show them a little, little tiny card, right? Um, so even even the pictures or the printings that you do 
print them big print them big let them see the detail in your work um so that you can, they can really appreciate just how much work actually goes into what you do and that it really shows off your um your grind right it really shows how how like hard you actually worked on to making all these details happen um and, and you know sometimes photos can't explain that as well and like at at this certain day and age i mean this was shot on my iphone 4 um and the camera quality is not that amazing but it just it does justice for what it does right here where it's just showing um kind of the overview of me drowning in my portfolio stress and i'm telling you i've been there we've done that <laughs> so it's just me documenting like you know the whole portfolio stage of high school and I, i've been there and i know it and you know you'll get through it <laughs> that's very comforting to hear <laughs> uh okay so uh what goes in a sketchbook for graphic design because i, I i'm not sure if a sketchbook is required in every single design program was it required in your in your graphic design program yes it was it was mandatory you needed to have a sketchbook okay so let's get into it <laughs> yes so i've included the piece the, some of the pieces with a final so that you can actually see um in the top right corner there's the final piece Again, that social media kind of thing. Um, and you can see some of my notes I actually wrote there. Um, goldfish represents society. And then the anglerfish represents the predators and, and the other things like that. And then um, the light represented social media in general and the background uh, not looking at the, the full picture when using social media. So th these are notes I don't even remember from, from that time, but I'm glad I wrote them because when I look back, it does refresh my mind and go like, oh yeah, I do remember making those, this, those creative decisions. And note taking in your sketchbook is one of the most important things i'd say uh for graphic design if you're applying for a graphic design um portfolio or or, or program because your notes they want to see that they want to know what you're thinking um as to each explanation along the way because it's a very it's a very industry practice even now to this day my university notes uh at the time were also really well in depth written more more so than this it only grew more in depth and now that i'm in even in the workforce it's only grown more in depth as well with with deep communication and writing as to your thoughts and process on, on like why you're doing things basically why you're making these decisions they're not just i feel it you know it's actually like oh well it has to be this way because there's x y and z happening yes and it and shows then, you're a planner right and that you're yes. thinking about all of the elements that go into your piece and you're not just starting at a corner <laughs> yes. starting at a yes. random corner no you put so as an adjudicator, I would look at this piece and say, oh, like you studied, you know, the different uh, different styles and different uh, poses of goldfish uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, really like really examining uh, symbolism and like thinking it through and taking his time. And so it's 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 very um, really important to include some of the process work uh, that you did to arrive at your final pieces. And if you don't have them, just do them anyway. <laughs> do them after the fact because yes, they can always. I've, yeah. <laughs> have you done that before? I definitely Jay? <laughs> agree. I've done that many times. Um, and something else I want to note actually in this sketchbook picture um, on the left is the tabs. Um, you might notice I have sticky notes actually all over the place. Um, the pink one and even a yellow one. Uh, but these were actually to help me when when presenting them live um, to be able to just flip to it right away and go like, show, show my best sketches basically and go like, oh, these are some of the sketches that I showed. And you know, if they're asking, if they go like, oh, do you have any process work on this specific piece? I can actually just go into my sketchbook, flip it right away and go like, here you go. I have it. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it really impresses them. Cause if you think about it, you only have maybe 10 to 15 minutes with a, with, um, with an evaluator and you know, you don't want to spend three minutes of it scrambling around your sketchbook looking for this one piece that you thought was really good or that a piece or a sketch that you really want to show them that has really heavy um i guess explanation or in-depth analysis on on a piece you don't want to spend three minutes looking for that so if you can just flip to it right away you can go like here you go and then explain out everything right away and only be able to explain more um afterwards great tip ah some more process work Yes. So yeah, I always, I, I document a lot of my process work and I actually used to have a whole documentation of the actual process of me making them. Um, and that was actually my actual big one, uh, my actual big uh, portfolio booklet thingy. But I had pictures of the actual drawing itself, 
um, from white, almost from basically blank paper all the way to the finished piece, um, just to show how it was being seen and everything. But this piece too, I remember, you know, we had to we had to do some thinking. There were some specific requirements that um, uh, the project required, which was uh, like the the little portrait inside the eye that was a very important piece i remember that was like something that we needed to do and that was a picture of something called migrant mother i forget who it's by but it's a photo it's a famous photo and we had to include one famous photo and um and be able to reference it inside our actual like drawing so you do if that was part of the job requirement or even i guess in this high school tech in this high school context um part of this project assignment you take note of that and one of the first few things you got to figure out so piecing all those things and then putting in your own spin um after is uh how i ended up with uh this piece and yeah it's crazy <laughs> it's a wild piece i remember this one and uh, this piece yeah, yeah so, you, so you created all of these in your sketchbook before you brought them into illustrator Yes, yes. Um, and these are all like, they, they used to be low rendered sketches and the, how I actually usually do it. And it's kind of funny because um, this is basically why on uh, anything like Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or any of the Adobe programs or anything that has, um, you can draw anything on uh, digitally, there's layers. And the way that I worked on this was the same way. It's the same way you do traditionally. You have a rough sketch. And then what I would do actually in my process for these is take a take a nice pen and then layer it on top for a good sketch or a higher render. And then from there, I only layered it even further by bringing them over to Adobe Illustrator and then you know, doing a, a, the, the final good copy or right on top of the images. So I would take these images and I'd actually blow it up onto Adobe Illustrator to the size I needed at. And then I would just use the pen tool and I would trace over line art. I would trace over any other extra details I wanted to add um, and maybe add a couple lighting effects after towards the end. Very cool. <laughs> and these are fun too. These are so the the other pieces I've been showing um, before the up to leading up to this one was um, all of those were finished pieces that I showed and I came with. But I wanted to bring these into um, this presentation as well, just because like these are pieces I didn't exactly show. I didn't show final pieces of what these look like, but these are in my sketchbook and also things that I really liked. Um, these were things I, I thought had good thought analysis or just good notes written in it um, with a really high rendered sketch um, to show my visual idea and concept. So I had a I had a handful of these and you know it just goes to show that in your sketchbook, it's okay to have things that are not finalized or things that are not gonna be presented completely to its full extent. I still think that having your thoughts um, documented and written is really important when it comes down to uh, what exactly a sketchbook is. And then here's some more, um, some other ones that I didn't show, but this also can help show you what my sketchbook kind of looked like at the time. It's really rough, it's really dirty. Um, there's thumbnails everywhere. The thumbnails aren't even like, you, I didn't even use a ruler, some of them, I just <laughs> put a square and then just go at it. And then uh, you can see the one on the right is actually a printing of what the final was. Um, and I just printed it because I wanted to show the before and after. Um, so that's also a really good thing you could do in your sketchbook too, is you can print actual digital pieces, cut them up, and then stick it in your sketchbook. I think it's a really good way to show um, part of your process as well um, when, showing, when showing those kind of things. Great tips. Well, speaking of tips, <laughs> Uh, we are uh, at our Q&A or our portfolio advice section. I know a lot of uh, you might have all of these burning questions and you will have an opportunity to ask questions uh, and have them answered. But in the meantime, I wanted to ask you, Jay, if you had to give yourself advice. So if present Jay gave past Jay uh, some portfolio advice, <laughs> what would that advice be um that's a good point and i I've, I've talked about it a little bit um throughout the presentation but um definitely one of them would have to be that uh your sketchbook again going back to this point but your sketchbook is your playground um and there's a big reason as to why i i say this because um me in eighth grade applying to art high school in grade nine i remember very distinctly um, being so unconfident in what I was showing in my sketchbook. I was the kid 
who didn't want to show his sketchbook to anyone. Why? Because I just felt like all my drawings were bad. I just thought everything that I was making is so embarrassing. What an embarrassment. Like, the heck? Like, what are you drawing in this? It's so it's, it's like your creative diary in a way, right? Is, is what I guess some people would say. Um, but it wasn't until I got that rejection that made me realize that that's not what a sketchbook should be. You can have a whole nother sketchbook for that, but the one for your for process and everything is that's not what it should be. I remember grade eight, I was ripping every single page that I didn't like out of it. And I ended up submitting a, a, a sketchbook with like eight to 10 pages. Like that, it only made me realize when I got rejected after like why, when I was in high school, why I got rejected. I, I submitted a sketchbook with eight to 10 pages. Like what the heck? Of course you're going to get rejected. <laughs> so um, it just made me realize that like, you know, after going through high school and learning all the fundamentals that your sketchbook is your playground. It's it's where you, you should be most comfortable. Um, feel free to rough write notes. Feel free to write to yourself things that you're thinking about, things that you want to draw, things you want to do later. Draw whatever you want. It's it's your it's your home. It's your house. And if you need to show things to an evaluator later, that's why I said make sure you just have tabs so you don't have to show the parts that you don't want to show. You know, you don't have to show everything. But having coming in with a full sketchbook of of just a whole sketchbook filled. That already impresses an evaluator just at the at, just at the sight of that. It just shows that you're you're really practicing and that you're really um, pushing yourself to just draw. As you just love it, <laughs> kind of thing. It can show that really easily by um by having that filled. And I I, I just want to emphasize one point, and is that your sketchbook should not be perfect drawings on every single page. That is not the mm -hmm. intention of a sketchbook. Uh, you know, your sketchbook should be rough and it should, it, you know, if anything, uh, there are ways to make it look pretty by adding, you know, colors or collage or, you know, experiments um, that are a, a bit more colorful than just pencil. But don't be, you know, set on making every single page perfect, because not only is that stressful, it's very unrealistic and not really what a sketchbook is for. Okay, so the next tip. Oh, my next tip would definitely have to be processes everything, uh, especially in graphic design. Because when you, when you have process work, it, it shows it shows everything. Like again, in your sketchbook, it's the notes. It's the notes that they want to see. And I remember my my high school teacher at the time was really emphasizing this point to us, uh, and a lot of us didn't really understand why. We just thought it was extra work. It, we just thought like, oh, it's it's so that the teacher can understand and and learn how to grade us. But no, it, it it meant so much more to me after I finished the evaluation because what the questions that they ask you is they'll act, they actually ask you things about like what is this piece about? What is your thought process behind this? How can you see this like in 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 a communication setting, right? Like how can you see this being put on a poster? Like how can you sell this, right? Even right, like all those kind of questions that's where that's where your process and writing comes into play because you need to know exactly what this piece is about why you're doing it in the first place and then maybe even later explain um how you can push that to be marketable or how you can sell that as an actual thing what context does it fit the best in does it fit best as a t-shirt does it fit in their, under under game design maybe these fit into a video game and then uh or mobile app or even this illustration it could be a phone like phone covers i don't know um there's a whole bunch of different things but if you write those down and you write all your thought process and everything and even document your the way that you got from point a to all the way to point b will really help show an evaluator um how you're doing things in your workflow more specifically as well so that they can see how they can um help you become more efficient as you get into the program as well Mm -hmm. Great tip. And if you're one of those uh, uh, people who haven't done any process work, do it now. Do it Just after. It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And our third tip. Yes, my third tip would definitely have to be showing your personality. Um, it, yeah, it makes you more it makes you more memorable. Um, showing your personality is really good. I think there's some pieces that if you have a personal favorite in your collection, I would show it. I would show it. If, it if it's something that you like like let's say like your art teacher gives you a bad grade on this one piece but you personally really like it just because like, it has a bad grade doesn't mean it's bad <laughs> at the end of the day art is so subjective so if you love that piece you might as well show it and explain why you like it so much and you can explain maybe it has a weird quirk to it that that will really show your personality you say like oh i really like this piece because it actually means a lot more to me than 
than it does to other people. And then using that as a hook, you can really help explain things about your personality or your personal life, or even just things that you're interested in. Um, I think personality goes a long way. Um, it helps to see that, you know, hey, this guy has, this guy's, uh, his work is good, but his personality is even greater. And if there's anything I can tell you, even after you finish university or even after you finish high school, is the one thing that the, an employer will not want is a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> they want to work with, yeah, as an employer, I want to work with someone who is funny, someone who, you know. You know what I mean? Has, yeah, someone you want to spend time with, right? Yeah, because, so. like, you're going to be in the classroom <laughs> with other people and, you know, they're going to want to want people who are just, you know, really excited, really passionate about art. They don't, they're not going to want someone who's super cocky and, and, you know, thinking like, yo, this, I made this piece. It's one of my best pieces. It's the best thing ever. I think it can sell for millions. Like, no, no one wants to work with someone like that, let alone be in a classroom with that person. So I definitely think being able to show some of your personality will really help you um, set yourself apart from, from the rest. Even if you might feel like your art is not always like the top of the top. I think technical skills can always be trained on but your personality cannot be changed as, as easily. And you, you bring up a good point, uh, Jay, when you say, you know, if you have a personal favorite and you feel very strongly about it, or you feel like that piece really shows your personality, uh, definitely include it. Um, the one thing though, that I will warn everybody against is fan art. So if you create a piece because you really love this celebrity and you know, they mean the world to you, that is not a good reason <laughs> necessarily mm -hmm. to include it. It's more about showing a side of you, something more personal or something more conceptual. Um, because I do see fan art is one of those things that we have to be very careful about in, in portfolios in general. Agreed. All right. So um, that is it for today for the portfolio <laughs> advice, but the conversation can keep going. So we have a discord uh, for Wing Canvas where you can connect with other art nerds and join our community. The invite link is in the description of this video. And we have a special channel just for portfolio students. So it's a place where you can share your artwork, uh, get feedback, you know, encourage other people so that you are supported and you are not alone in this process. So uh, be sure to join our Discord. You can uh, find me there. You can find Jay as well as our other uh, instructors. And if you want to have your portfolio critiqued live here on YouTube, uh, there is a link in the description for you to upload them. So if you want a free critique, uh, be sure to fill out that form and uh, we will make it happen. And that's it. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Jay. We learned so much from you. And <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. And the next time we see Jay, hopefully we will see some of his professional work. So stay tuned for that. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye.